Outlaw memoir have been leaked to the New York Times, detailing her struggles with fame. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the biggest bombshells leaked from Britney Spears' new memoir. There's a lot that people don't know. Details from the 275-page book leaking. The New York Times publishing excerpts from a copy obtained from a retail store. The tell-all looking back at her struggle with fame and her recently ended conservatorship. That 13-year period? a big chunk of the new book, the conservatorship putting her dad, Jamie, at the helm of major financial and personal decisions. Spears writing, migraines are just one part of the physical and emotional damage I have now that I'm out of the conservatorship. I don't think my family understands the real damage that they did. ABC News reached out to Jamie Spears, who had no comment. And we'll have more revelations from the book coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. David's really excited about that one. Don't roll your eyes at Brittany. She's my girl, okay? 516, 58 degrees. I I'm your kidding. eye roll says it all. We know David better than that. <laughs> There's a shot of trans guy. So far, so good. Stephen Cavasso will save us all in just a second. <laughs> I'm Andrea, founder of a boutique handbag brand, Andy. And this is why I switched to Shopify. It's the challenges that we don't expect, like a site going down or the checkout wouldn't work. What's nice about Shopify is when I'm with my family, when I'm taking time off, knowing that I have a site up and running and our business is moving forward because we have a platform that we can rely on, that is gold to us. Start your free trial with Shopify today. Good morning with Vocalax. Good, good, good morning. Try Dolcolax Chewy Fruit Bites for fast and gentle constipation relief in as little as 30 minutes. Making your good morning even better with Dolcolax. Start your day with Nature Me, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Well, it's early. And it I'm is. here. I was going to say, you're not used to this, are no. you? I'm not. You haven't, you haven't done this shift in forever. Since like Christmas time. And then yeah. before that, it was four years. Wow. I know. But I'm really happy to be here with well, you guys. She's very happy. <laughs> yeah. It's also really fun ragging on David. So <laughs> we're we're going to have a good time to, this morning. What, what? Did I have like rag on me on my forehead when you walked in today? And you saw know. that and you went, hey, let's just pick on David. I'm just hey. feeling it. Okay. It's, it's keeping the morning entertaining. I'll be honest with that. I Good mean, point. these two over here are keeping Mike and I entertained. Thank you. Yeah, but, <laughs> hey, guys, uh, right. thankfully, traffic uh, is pretty smooth, so we'll keep it pretty quick here. Uh, not a lot show, uh, to show you here on Trans Guide. Easy moving uh, day for a lot of folks out there this early in the morning. You can see it there on your screen. It's not a lot of people out there this early, so that's good. But taking you to the map, what we can expect to see is some construction. And as a quick reminder here, Loop 1604 North Expansion Project, there's going to be a full closure taking place this weekend all the way up until Monday, October 23rd, 9 in the evening at 5 in the morning. We'll see the Loop 1604 eastbound main lanes fully closed from the Vance Jackson Road exit ramp to the Lock Hill Summer Road entrance ramp. So follow those detours and scan this QR code. Takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There's a full list of all the closures that I have updated earlier in the week. So just plan that commute ahead of time. Uh, Mike, how what's going on this weekend? I uh, had <laughs> summer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, today. Yesterday was today, tomorrow, and then very humid conditions. Anyway, first of all, great shot from yesterday and all of that fog that was out there and the clear skies. That's not going to be the situation this morning just because we've got very dry air out there. We had that little bit of a, a front that moved on through, really dried us out nicely. We've got a lot of clear skies as of right now. 58 degrees here at the airport, 56 Randolph, 55 Port SA, and then 48 already at Comfort and even 50 at Bernie Stage, 48 Balverde. And with this drier air, clear skies, light wind, we will continue to drop down a few more degrees. Yeah, dew points are back down in the 30s and 40s around here. 16 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday as far as the, the dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, if you will. And that's going to remain the case throughout the day where we are going to keep this dry air in place. So 
two things. Yes, it will be comfortable later on this afternoon when we get so hot. And again, the dry air doesn't hold the heat in and it heats up very easily. And that's why we are going to be gaining basically 40 degrees later on today. Like I said, Humidity stays low through tomorrow, but then watch what happens as we go into tomorrow night and Sunday. This moisture is just going to surge back in here, so it's going to be a whole different story coming around here on Sunday. As far as the humidity is concerned, more clouds. More on that in a second. Temperatures, we will gain just about 30 degrees throughout the course of the morning, getting up to 86 at noon. You know, you can probably watch the thermometer go up in the morning hours. And then again, we top off 94 later on today. Plenty of sunshine out there, and that's going to set a new record. The current record is 92, so pretty easy. Uh, easy, very good bet, I should say, it's setting the record. All right, we're still looking at Norma down here in the Pacific Ocean. Some of the high clouds trying to move on in here. We'll see more of these tomorrow, and this will continue then to throw some moisture in here. We get a good surge, like I said, of moisture from the Gulf, and then this eventually and combined with the Gulf is going to throw enough moisture in here by next week, and that's going to give us some rain chances starting next week. Today, record high temperature. At least we have low humidity. Record high tomorrow. Some high clouds start to work their way on in here. Humidity comes back in then by Sunday and 88 degrees. So yeah, it's going to be very sultry on Sunday. Then Monday, a small chance for a couple of showers around here. And that's going to increase a bit by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Temperatures low 80s. Hey, rain chances throughout most of next week. Not a bad thing. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's 527. The FCC has approved funding to help school districts provide Wi-Fi on school buses. ABC's Rihanna Alley has the details on how the kids can log in in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, more internet access on school buses. The FCC has voted to allow school districts to use federal funds for Wi-Fi on buses. Advocates say it will help kids in rural areas, but opponents claim it could increase unsupervised internet use. WhatsApp will soon let you add two accounts to one device, and you can log on to both at the same time. Users will not have to carry an extra phone to switch between accounts, but you will need a second phone number or a phone that supports dual SIMS cards. It's rolling out in the coming weeks for Android devices. Finally, Google Meet is rolling out a new feature so users can look their best. Google Meet now offers modes that provide complexion smoothing, under eye lightening, and teeth whitening. For now, though, it's only available to mobile users with premium Google accounts. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. Interesting, Interesting with Wi-Fi on school buses. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. You think there's going to have to be some rules? Yeah, for sure. We can't relate to that. Well, that's not the way. <laughs> and then the kids will wait till they get on the bus to do their homework because they'll just get on. I got Wi-Fi that's, on there now. I, don't do my homework. I never even thought of that. Yeah. That's very smart. <laughs> that's very smart. All right, it's 529, 58 degrees. It's the same song, 50th verse in Washington. Lawmakers still can't decide on a new House speaker. Coming up next, why Republicans are already looking for a third alternative. Plus, what you need to know about a recall involving thousands of a popular toy train due to a choking risk. Coming up on GMSA, we head to Honda when we meet the ladies of the Hondo Garden Club and how they are beautifying their community. Making news this morning, lawmakers still haven't agreed on a new House speaker in Washington, and that's bad news for Congressman Jim Jordan. Seems like every time we go to the floor, he loses more votes along the way. Yeah, not good news. Up next. Why Republicans are now looking for someone else to fill the position. And taking a live look outside with live cam. Beautiful morning, just 58 degrees, and we're going to get Mike's forecast coming up. But first, we want to get back to that late breaking news we told you about at the 5 o'clock hour. San Antonio police are at the scene of a pretty messy mystery, a car that somehow landed inside a local gym. Yeah, it's quite a scene. Katrina Weber is live in the 8500 block of McCullough Avenue near North Star Mall. Katrina, how bad's that damage? 
Well, I think the damage is still being added up, but from where we, where we stand, it looks like this may be a case of the treadmill saving the day. Take a look back here. We can see a lot of broken glass. It appears that they had some treadmills lined up against the window, so when the car went inside, it pushed that treadmill forward, but was stopped right there. Uh, the car was half in, half out when we got here, and police say that's exactly what they found. They got a call about four this morning about this car that had already crashed. So they're not even sure what time this happened overnight, but someone passing by noticed the car protruding from the front of this business and called it in. Police say they did not find anyone inside the car. The driver apparently took off and they say the car came back as stolen. Now, the business was not open. There was no one inside as we have people in there now uh, at the time. So no one was hurt, but police still trying to figure out who was behind all of this and who left this mess behind. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, check out outside. Beautiful, beautiful morning. We're going to have another one of these spectacular sunrises. And, you know, yesterday it was getting a little bit on the humid side. Humidity has just dropped like a rocket. It was dropping throughout the day yesterday, which is one reason why we got up to 90 yesterday. Right now we are at 58, 2.41. So big, big difference between these two. Very dry air, a light breeze out of the west and northwest. And as you can see, plenty of clear skies out there, which is why the temperature will continue to drop down a few more degrees before it's all said and done. We're already down to 50 at uh, Comfort, 48 Kerrville, Balverde as well, and 60 still kind of hanging in there up the road at Canyon Lake. And again, throughout the rest of the morning, like I said, we dropped down a few more degrees. We're going to be bottoming out at 54, so we'll still be or end up being five below normal, clear, coolish, yeah, light jacket. And then earlier in the week, just to kind of compare, we gained 30 degrees. That's a that's a huge jump from the low to the high. Today it's going to be 40 degrees thanks to the dry air out there and also those westerly winds which pulls in that you know that downsloping air which really then heats up. So we got some good looking weather for football tonight although it is definitely going to be on the warm side. 88 at kickoff, 78 at halftime, sunsets just before 7 o'clock. So it's going to feel like summer today, record high temperatures, same thing tomorrow. Then the humidity really comes back in here and we got some rain chances to talk about. So that's some really good news. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Well, Mike, uh, off to a good start over here. I have not seen any big issues that would slow folks down, but let's get a wider look at Trans Guide to show you what's taking place out on our roadways. Uh, there's a shot at 410, and you can see the east and westbound lanes there close to Ingram North are moving along just fine. Not a lot of folks out there, but expect to see that change probably within the next hour or so. I've been watching the roads closely, and thankfully all I'm catching is a lot of pavement and a few folks. But as we get a look behind me, the map is still off to a pretty quiet start as well. We're not seeing any red or congestion building up just yet, but I guarantee you that first spot we're going to see it is right there along US 90 eastbound. So if you're heading in from Castroville, now would probably be the time to do it. Even if you're heading in from I-10, that journey from Bernie should still be about 23 minutes along I-10 eastbound. 26, no need to hurry if you are traveling in from Mulverde. This is what we can expect on 281 southbound, and it's not too awful from New Braunfels, I-35 southbound. We have 24 minutes to get right here to the Alamo City. So again, our morning off to a quiet start. We're all ready to drive off into the weekend, but more closures are on the way along Loop 1604. I have all the information you need to know before you go coming up in the next few minutes. David. Hey, Stephen. All right, we're going to take a live look at the nation's capital this morning. Representative Jim Jordan is going to be holding a press conference in just a few hours. This will take place right before he's expected to make a third attempt at winning the role of Speaker of the House. The Republican from Ohio spent much of yesterday trying to coax holdouts to support his bid. However, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, several members of the GOP are already talking about other options. Representative Jim Jordan is hoping the third time will be a charm. I'm still running for speaker and I plan to go to the floor uh, and get the votes and win this race. But some Republicans think Friday's vote for Speaker of the House will be Jordan's third strike. Seems like every time we go to the floor, he loses more votes along the way. So I do think a, a candidate is going to rise out of the ashes and hopefully bring some sanity back to my party. The House has been without a speaker for more than two weeks after the historic ouster of Rep Kevin McCarthy. You can't do anything until you elect a speaker, and apparently there's not enough votes to elect a speaker. Some in the House, including McCarthy, support boosting interim speaker Patrick McHenry's power in the meantime. He's been here a number of years, so he understands how Congress works. He has respect on both sides of the aisle. 
he could carry out the job. But this would require Democratic backing. We haven't had a caucus meeting about this issue and about this potential path because we're not sure yet what the Republicans on the other side of the aisle plan to do. Right now, McHenry is slamming the gavel on that idea. Look, my, my goal is to get Jim Jordan elected speaker. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm John Lawrence. Well, the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists are asking actors to ditch certain Halloween costumes this year. The Actors Union is recommending actors choose costumes inspired by generic characters or ones from animated television show. The group also suggested actors not post pictures of costumes inspired by striking content to social media in order not to give the studios extra publicity. SAG-AFTRA said that they want to send a message to their employers they will not promote their content without a fair contract. The union has been on strike since July 14th. Chick-fil-A has reportedly agreed to settle a class action lawsuit regarding inflated delivery prices during the pandemic. According to the lawsuit filed in Georgia, the food chain promised low delivery fees through its app or website. However, it then increased menu prices on delivery orders by as much as 30 percent. Chick-fil-A did not admit guilt, but has agreed to pay $4.4 million in the settlement. Eligible customers should receive either cash or a gift card in the amount of $29. If you are eligible, you will receive an email. Chick-fil-A also agreed to add a disclosure on its app and website stating that product prices may be higher for delivery orders. It won't stop people from going. No. Those lines are crazy. All right, it's 539 and 59 degrees. Coming up next, an important recall for a popular children's toy that could be a potential choking hazard. And taking a look outside at live cam, beautiful morning, 59. I wish it wouldn't change, but you know, we've got something coming up in the forecast. Mike will be there to tell you all about it. Urban 15 is a nonprofit arts organization, and since the early 80s, their Dia de los Muertos processions have combined both their spirituality and talent. When you see Urban 15, you've seen a rhythmic moving altar. When we are in costume or in character, it's a transformation. Color, it's movement, it's rhythm, it's costuming, it's the banners, it's the lighting. Uh, we're, we're one big Altare moving down uh, the street. So we grew up in a tradition of procession. As part of Dia de los Santos and Dia de los Muertos uh, was a very natural thing to do. And I will say in the beginning when we were first doing this, people didn't quite understand what we were doing and people were um, offended. Othering our ancestors and our parents and our grandparents and the people who came before us it's a very natural thing to do, and many cultures don't do that. As we dance and we play music, it is a, a form of honor. It's a form of prayer. We are very excited about the Day of the Dead celebration, so stay tuned for that. Now to your morning consumer headlines. Fisher Price recalling thousands of popular toy trains over a choking risk. The recall involves roughly 21,000 of the Thomas and Friends wooden rail ra railway troublesome truck and crates. It's a black and gray train car with brown crates. The recall also includes Thomas and Friends troublesome truck and paint toys. Fisher Price says a small plastic piece with a high powered magnet that connects the trains can loosen or detach, posing a big choking and ingestation hazard for kids. No injuries have been reported, though. The toy trains were sold nationwide at Barnes and Noble and other specialty stores from February of last year through August of this year. Some were also sold on Amazon. A new data shows the number of homes sold in the U.S. last month dropped to the lowest level in 13 years. Sales of existing homes fell 2% from August to September to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 3.96 million units. This comes as higher prices and mortgage rates have pushed many would-be buyers right out of the market. Another factor also putting a damper on home sales, a historically low supply of homes for sale. Low inventory, one of the main reasons prices are staying high. What a roller coaster the yeah. housing market's been on just from a year ago. This interest rate is killing that in. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Hurting. All right, it's 545, 58 degrees.
Outside with Trans Guy, things still running pretty smooth for a Friday. Thank goodness Stephen Cavazos is here to brag about all that highway. <laughs> All right, we're 10 minutes till 6 a.m. And thankfully, traffic's been pretty quiet for the most part, folks. Let's just get a quick look around town. 410 at Harry Wurzbach. Not a lot has changed in the last hour, but expect that to probably ramp up as we get more folks out there getting ready to drive off into the weekend. As I mentioned, we do have big closures along Loop 1604 as part of the North Expansion Project, and this is just something else you can expect overnight. We do have more full closures on the way. That begins again Friday, October 20th. Should wrap on Monday, October 23rd. Now, this full closure again will begin at 9 at night and finish at five in the morning, but we'll see the 1604 eastbound collector distributor at the I-10 fully closed during that time. So follow those detours. I'm in the middle of drafting up an article, so you can head over to KSAT.com later today for a full uh, list of information on what's happening. But this is a pretty big project. It's been going on for quite a while. Not expected to wrap anytime soon, uh, so expect some congestion along Loop 1604. But right now here on Transguide, it's moving along just fine. With all these construction projects, mm -hmm. no rain, no excuses. Yeah, that's true. Done. But pack your patience, though, because I it know. does take time to get through all this, yeah. and the yeah. end game is to make the roads a better place yeah. for everybody. Yeah, but you get can... Get after it. At least you could roll your windows down if you're sitting, you know, it's like nice true. out this morning. You get all that dust blowing into your car. All right, all right. Then yeah. you're sneezing, you got a headache, uh, you know. Okay, no. so don't roll the, don't windows, roll the down. windows down. Don't roll the windows David. down. <laughs> what I will say is you have to, if you're going to roll the windows down, not in construction zones, <laughs> you're going to have to do it early because yeah. summer, it's, it's basically rude. What what these temperatures are doing? <laughs> I'm personally yeah. offended yeah. Yeah. by right. this temperature yeah. today. We'll, we'll go with rude. That, that sounds good. So you know it's not rude, <laughs> and I don't care who you're rooting for. This picture. Aww. Oh my god. This will wow. make you forget anything. <laughs> Look oh, at these they're two. They're twins. Yes, so and cute. they are Astros fans. And oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> wow. That bow. <laughs> the bow for me. That just. Uh, I mean. Yeah. No, I like this guy sitting here going, hey, hey, all right, baby. <laughs> so cute. That's cute. a great shot. Thank you for the KSAT Connect picture. See, that made you forget everything. Yeah. Right? yeah. Even if your windows were down in construction areas, yes. you, that made Goodness. you forget it. Clear skies out there right now. <laughs> and pleasantly cool. We got uh, 50 at Comfort, 49 Bandera right now, 58 at the airport. We will drop down a few more degrees, 48 already at Balverde. Dry air out there. We got clear skies, light wind, so still radiational cooling. And, of course, the humidity, which was up somewhat yesterday really really dried down that's one of the reasons why we did get up to 90 yesterday and that's one of the contributing factors to getting up to 94 later on today yes a rude temperature that's just the best way to put it so we're going to warm up really really quickly throughout the morning i mean going up leaps and bounds each and every hour up to 86 at noon so we're going to be gaining already 30 by noon and then add on basically another 10 to that up to 94 so we're going to be seeing a 35 40 degree swing in temperatures from the low to the high again like i said it's due in part to the dry air in place and then also the wind is going to be out of the west and so that's that down sloping wind by the way that's going to be a new record high temperature later on today so we'll clear skies today tomorrow some high clouds clouds thicken up on sunday then Monday, we start to see a lot of moisture come in here from the Gulf and from the Pacific. So we've got some small rain chances around on Monday. That's going to extend into Tuesday. And not every long range computer model is just as gung ho with this, which is why I'm keeping rain chances 30%. Because, and again, this paints with kind of a broad brush. But the nice thing is, we are going to have rain chances hanging around here through pretty much all of next week and maybe even going into next Saturday as well. So that'll be a good thing. And with, you know, five, almost six days of rain chances in the forecast, that, that's something we haven't seen around here in a long time. So pretty much uh, most everybody's going to see a sprinkle here or there. Record high today, record high tomorrow. 90s humidity comes back in here. But like I said, so do those uh, rain chances pretty much all week next week. That's what like that's it. what matters. Yes, indeed. we need that so mm -hmm. bad. So I'll take it. 553 and 58 degrees. Friday's lot of numbers. Guys, it's been a while. Which ones do I read? The th uh, pick three. Okay, the pick three. Seven, five, six. It's a fireball. The fireball of two. Oh, I like that. All right. Okay. 
Daily Forbes. The da oh, we're reading all of them. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's been seriously years since I've read the lottery. Okay. Daily four is six, nine, one, six. Another fireball, that one's six. Cash five, five is 216, 21, 28, 30. Well, let me help you. And Texas lot <laughs> four, six, Listen. 10, 26. The uh, bonus ball was 24. And that's it. Oh, see, I can read the numbers. I just didn't know we read them all. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll be right oh, back. Because there's somebody at home marking those things down going, did I win? Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the latest on the war in the Middle East. President Biden addressing the nation last night, calling for support for Israel amid fears of a wider war. Our team is, of course, there on the ground. And the U.S. soldier who crossed into North Korea is now facing desertion charges. The reaction this morning. You'll see those stories and so much more on Good Morning America. But before that, ahead in our next hour of GMSA, the Houston Astros have tied things up in the ALCS with the Texas Rangers. What fans need to know before tonight's all-important Game 5. Plus, Edgewood ISD is considering closing schools. What parents are saying and what the move could mean for other school districts going forward. And also coming up next, flu season is here where you can get your free flu shot this weekend and how it could keep you out of the hospital. Look at Trans Guide as we go to break. Things rolling along pretty smooth right now. Stephen Cavazos will be along with you know if there's any trouble spots you need to be aware of. And Mike's got your forecast coming up. We'll be back. And this morning on GMSA, San Antonio police are working to figure out how this stolen car wound up in a gym near North Star Mall. What we've been able to learn from the scene. Plus, President Biden delivering a major foreign policy speech last night on Ukraine and Israel. I'm ABC News' Liz Landers with more on the request that he plans to send to Congress. And taking a live look outside at live cam. It's a beautiful morning, so go outside now if you can because it's about to heat up. Mike's going to tell us all about it. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Oh, it's a special good morning because it's six o'clock and it's Friday. It's October 20th. I'm very excited to be here. I never, here. never usually work in the morning shift, but I've missed you guys. I'm very excited that David's here too. Do you notice it's dark outside? It is, it's dark. Listen, I have a toddler, so I do wake up before, it's, before <laughs> oh. the sun comes up, oh, but yeah? not at like three in the morning. So okay, well. I did that especially for you two. Thank you. Speaking of and sun, Steven. only Two weeks until we get rid of daylight saving time oh. and get back to, as my mom calls it, God's time. So, God's time. Yes, yeah, so that'll be on the first weekend of November. Anyway. You fall back, right? Yeah, you, you fall oh. back. But All that's right. that extra the, hour. Yeah, that's a whole. That's, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. It is hot, though. I mean, you can't even think about fall this time of year. Got in my car yesterday. It was like, oh, goodness gracious. You know, even had the Still sunshine sweating. up and everything. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. So, and it's going to be even hotter. Yesterday, we did get up to 90. It's nothing compared to today. A lot of clear skies out there as of right now. We've dropped another degree, 57 in town, 49 Kerrville, Bandera, 48 there in Balverde, and some 50s elsewhere. We still have very dry air with this very low humidity and clear skies, light winds, so we will continue to drop down a little bit more over the next couple of hours down to uh, 54 degrees. And then the dry air really going to heat up very quickly as it did earlier in the week when we gained 30 degrees between the low and the high. But the difference today is we are going to have a westerly wind and that tends to downslope and also compress and heat up. So that's one of the reasons why well, we'll already heat up 30 degrees by noon, but then we top off at 94 later on today. So it is going to be blisteringly hot out there. At least the humidity is going to be on the lower side. Also, that's going to be setting a new record high temperature. Another record is in jeopardy tomorrow. Still some low humidity. Then that's all going to change. But we have some rain to talk about in the forecast. So that's some really good news. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything yet? No, not, oh, not at all, Mike. Thankfully, things have just been smooth in my department. 90 in Nogalito. So this is one of those shots where we see traffic building up just a little bit more. Uh, take a look at your screen. The east and westbound lanes just getting a little bit more crowded out there. So pack your patience 
if you have to travel through there, I can guarantee you we will see some congestion there along those eastbound lanes in the next few minutes. But as we get a look around town, uh, this is pretty much what we're going to see right now. Quiet. It's green. Plenty of space out there for you, but still take your time if you are heading into San Antonio this early in the morning. I would say it's still pleasant from Pleasanton along 37 northbound with 27 minutes to get here to the Alamo City. Along US 90 heading in from Castroville, we're still under about 30 minutes, so that's good news. And the arrival from Lytle should be about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. So again, things are off to a great start, but we'll watch things closely as we get closer to uh, morning rush. But if you have to head to the gas station, we'll take a look at those prices and what you can expect before you head to the pump. David. Thanks, David. New this morning, a driver has given some people a good excuse for not working out this morning. Yeah. That person drove straight into a local gym. Our Katrina Weber has been there all morning. She's live now where that happened in the 8500 block of McCullough. That's near North Star Mall. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the gym was closed at the time. But right, thankfully, no one inside, no one got hurt. But uh, right now, we do have people inside. Those are some of the trainers who uh, showed up expecting to work with their early morning clients, only to find this big, nasty surprise inside their place of business. Uh, one of the trainers told me if this had happened just a little bit later, there would have been big problems because he was expecting someone here uh, at 5 o'clock to work out with him. Now, we have some video from the situation. You can see a car that half, was halfway inside the business. Business. Police found out about this around four this morning. They say a passerby noticed the car already inside the building and called it in. The driver who was in that car took off before police even got here, actually before the witness even noticed the car. There was no one here. So police are not sure who was driving the car, but they do know that the car was stolen. Uh, and they don't know exactly how this happened. That's kind of the big question here this morning is how a car just ended up in the middle of this gym. Uh, that's something that we may never find out, but police are looking for that driver, trying to track him down, hoping there's something on the surveillance video to give them some clues. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, two San Antonio police officers are still in the hospital with serious injuries after being shot during a domestic dispute call. According to SAPD Chief Wade McManus, the shooting started around 7.30 last night on a street called Alta Puerta on the northeast side. McManus says the two officers who were shot were the first two to arrive on that scene. He says the suspect went to a home to get his children, and we're told he got into a fight with someone at that house. The chief says he then started to douse the home with gasoline and threatened to set it on fire. When other officers arrived, police say he began firing a long gun, he hit two officers, one three times, the other once. Once again, both expected to be okay, and we'll hear from Chief McManus coming up in the 6.30 half hour. Now to the latest in the war between Israel and Hamas. You are looking live at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. It's early afternoon there. President Biden gave its major foreign policy speech covering the situation in Gaza last night from the Oval Office. It was actually a rare moment from President Biden addressing the nation from that office. He spent 15 minutes talking about the war between Ukraine and Russia and also the war between Israel and Hamas. The president also talked about funding. He hopes Congress will soon pass. ABC's Liz Landers has more on the humanitarian aid that's expected to arrive in Gaza today. We're facing an inflection point in history. This morning, President Biden comforting the nation and standing firmly with Israel and Ukraine as he pushes forward with an aid request to Congress to help both of those nations at war. If we walk away from Ukraine, if we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. Biden announcing that he will request $105 billion in aid from Congress, $60 billion for Ukraine and $14 billion for Israel, describing the generational impact it will have. It's a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. Help us keep American troops out of harm's way. Help us build a world that is safer, more peaceful, more prosperous for our children and grandchildren. While Biden stated that he does not want to send boots on the ground into a foreign conflict like Ukraine, the Department of Defense did announce that a U.S. Navy destroyer intercepted missiles and drones fired from Yemen in the direction of Israel. As tensions rise in the region and a ground offensive for Israel into Gaza appears imminent, the president also urging the public to retain American values. We must, without equivocation, denounce anti-Semitism. We must also, without equivocation, denounce Islamophobia. 
As the situation on the ground in Gaza continues to deteriorate, the White House and Egyptian officials have indicated that the first round of humanitarian aid, 20 trucks containing food, medicine and water, are expected to cross from Egypt into Gaza later today. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. Well, the American soldier who was brought to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland last month after crossing into North Korea is reportedly facing charges now. Military documents show Army Private Travis King is being charged with desertion and possession of child pornography. ABC News reports King is facing eight charges under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The Army says King crossed into North Korea in July. Our cameras were there when he arrived at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland last month. At the time, the Pentagon said King was taken to Brook Army Medical Center for reintegration. Happening later on today, Congressman Jim Jordan vowing to take his bid for the House Speaker job back to the floor for a third round of voting. House Republicans spent yesterday in closed door meetings trying to figure out a way to move forward after failing again to solve the House Speaker crisis. Jordan appears no closer to winning the post after meeting with some 22 mainstream GOP lawmakers opposed to his candidacy. He floated giving the temporary speaker, Congressman Patrick McHenry, more power to buy Jordan time to change people's minds. McHenry then threatened to quit if he was given more responsibilities outside his current role. Some other alternative here is something that I believe is unconstitutional and not conform with House rules. Furthermore, that I would not participate. Without a House Speaker, Congress remains paralyzed, unable to take up President Biden's request for Israel and Ukraine war funding, while another potential government shutdown looms next month. It is 6.09 and 59 degrees. After the break, flu season is here. Where you can get your free flu shot this weekend and how it can help keep you out of the hospital. And once again, outside with live cam. I think the word this morning was rude. Rude. I guess. Uh, it's not rude yet. It's going to be rude later. It's going to be rude. The temperatures will be rude. If later. you like heat, though, it won't be rude. <laughs> Coming back.